everyone. Welcome to The Logic of Murder, a podcast where we explore how criminological theories relate back to some of your favorite real-life cases. I'm Lily, and today we're looking into one of the most infamous cases in recent years, the University of Idaho murders. We're going to break it down using rational choice theory, which asks the important question, did the suspect Brian Koberger weigh the risks and benefits before committing this crime? I'm here with my co-hosts Nick Mullet and Rhiannon Galasso, and we're trying to walk you through the chilling details of this crime. Before we look into the theory, let's briefly recap what happened that night. On November 13th, 2022, four University of Idaho students, Kaylee Gons Caves, Madison Morgan, Anna Kernoodle, and Ethan Chaplin were found brutally murdered in their home near the campus. The attack occurred in the early hours of the morning with the victims believed to be have been asleep. When the, when the suspect entered the home, two women, Gans Cave and Morgan, were found in the same bed on the third floor when Canoodle and her boyfriend Chaplin were discovered on the second floor where all and all were stabbed multiple times with a large knife where there was no sign of, of sexual assault or robbery. What makes this case so terrifying is that two other roommates were in the house at the time but survived. One of them even had a brief encounter with the suspect, described as a man with bushy eyebrows, before locking herself in her room, unaware of the carnage upstairs. It wasn't until nearly noon the next day that a 911 call was made reporting an unconscious person, which is how the bodies were discovered. Despite this, the suspect managed to leave the scene, seemingly without a trace, which is where the forensics investigation comes into play. This case quickly caught national attention, and we were soon met the suspect, Brian Kohlberger. We now know a lot more about what happened that night, thanks to forensic evidence and nationwide manhunt that eventually led to his arrest. Later on, I'll talk more about how police tracked Kohlberger down, the evidence that led to to him being arrested. This case truly did blow up of seemingly nowhere. One day, it felt like we knew nothing, and then suddenly all the pieces started falling into place. True crime followers were definitely on the edge of their seats with this one. Okay, now let's get into exactly why we're applying rational choice theory to this case. We're using rational choice theory because it explains that people make decisions by rationally considering the risks and rewards. In Koberger's case, the question is if he planned this crime meticulously, thinking he could avoid getting caught. Lily, you've been looking into this theory. How how does it apply to Koberger's actions? So, essentially, rational choice theory suggests that before committing a crime, the offender evaluates the potential consequences. In Koberger's case, it seems as though he went to great lengths to control the situation. For instance, he allegedly turned off his phone and took specific routes to avoid being tracked. This shows a level of planning that aligns with rational choice theory. Koberger likely believed that by carefully orchestrating each step, he could reduce the risk of being caught. He knew the risk, but in his mind, the benefits, whatever those may have been for him, outweighed those risks. We'll touch on this more when we discuss the evidence, but it's clear that he was trying to cover his tracks. Right. And what's interesting is that rational choice theory doesn't just stop at the decision to commit the crime. It also plays into how the criminal plans to avoid getting caught. And if we see that in Koberger's actions, he wasn't just impulsively reacting, he was calculating. Let's get into the details of the crime itself and how that planning unfolded. On that night of the murders, Koberger's actions were quite methodical. Reports show that he drove from his home in Pullman, Washington to the crime scene. He even turned his phone off during the critical moments to avoid leaving a digital trail. However, this wasn't enough. DNA evidence left at the scene, specifically on a knife stealth sheath, was a turning point for the investigation. The forensic team, the forensics team, matched matched it to Koberger's using a family DNA p- database. That is, that's huge in terms of solving the case. What's fantasizing here is, despite all his planning, turning off his phone, choosing late night hours, even wearing dark clothing. He didn't consider that one small mistake could unravel everything. This is where rational choice theory sometimes falls short. No matter how we, how well someone thinks they could cover their tracks, human error always comes out. 
He planned a elaborate crime, but didn't think about something as basic as leaving DNA behind. We've all watched enough true crime Netflix to know that's a rookie mistake. And that's a key part of this case. Koberger thought he could outsmart the system, but the police were able to piece things together. His planning was good, but not perfect, and that's what ultimately led to his downfall. So we know that evidence linked him to the crime, but what about his mindset? Rhiannon, you're focusing on his thought process during this whole event. Exactly, Lily. Koberger's mentality is one of the most debated aspects of this case. Everyone's asking the same question. Why did he do it? Was he thinking about the consequences? Rational choice theory says that criminals make calculated decisions, but Koberger's actions suggest that there was something deeper at play. He studied criminology, so he would have been familiar with how police investigate crimes, and yet he still went through with it. Some experts suggest that his motivations could have been psychological, maybe a mix of thrill-seeking and a belief that he could beat the system. Did he consider the risks? Most likely, yes. Did he think he'd get caught? Probably not. The arrogance in thinking he could commit such a brutal crime and outsmart law enforcement speaks to a certain mindset. Yeah, it really is fascinating. Rational choice theory gives us a basis for understanding Koberger's planning, but there's also a psychological aspect that affects many cases like this very one. It's possible that he was so confident in his ability to avoid arrest that he didn't even believe he'd face any consequences. But at the end of the day, we see this did not work out for him at all. Like you said, Lily. This isn't just a one-off case. Rational choice theory can be applied to many crimes where offenders try to carefully plan their actions to avoid getting caught. From white-collar crimes to burglaries, criminals often weigh the risks and benefits before acting. But as we've seen with Koberger, there's always unknown variables that can throw off even the best laid plans, whether it's DNA left at the scene or a slip up in their movements. Rational choice theory can't account for everything. That's why it's important to remember that while rational choice theory is helpful in explaining some behaviors, it's not a foolproof model. It assumes a level of rationality that, as we've seen in Koberger's case, can sometimes be overridden by arrogance, emotion, or psychological factors. It's one tool in criminology, not the whole picture. So before we close out, let's talk about where this case stands today. Any updates? Oh yeah, definitely. As of October 2024, Brian Koberger's trial has been pushed back. It's now scheduled to start in July 2025. Wow, why the delay? Well, the trials got moved to Moscow to Boise, where of concerns of local bias. There was worry. There were worry about finding impartial jurors in the close knit close knit community. Yeah, that makes sense. I heard the prosecutors are seeking the death penalty, but his defense team is really pushing back on that. Exactly. They're arguing about the, about getting the death penalty off the table. It'll be for sure and interesting to see how the DNA evidence plays out in court. Yeah, especially since forensic evidence, like the DNA found on the knife sheath, was a game changer in linking him to the crime. The trial is expected to last until November 2025, right? Yeah, it'll be a long one, but it's shaping up to be one of the most watched trials in recent years. To wrap things up, the Idaho University murders show how rational choice theory can help explain the decision-making process of criminals like Brian Koberger. His meticulous planning fits with the theory, but it also emphasizes the limits of rational choice theory when you factor in psychological elements. Koberger believed that he could avoid the consequences, but forensic evidence and police work ultimately proved otherwise. Totally. While rational choice theory explains a lot, we can't forget the human side of things, the mental health, emotions, and motivations that aren't always logical. And the, and the evidence found DNA, phone records, surveillance footage shows us that no matter how careful a criminal, criminal, criminal thinks they're being there, are always clues left behind. In the end, Koberger's planning wasn't enough to avoid justice. Thank you guys for listening to our very first episode of The Logic of Murder. We hope it gives you a deeper understanding of how rational choice theory connects to a case that you know, like the Idaho murders. Stay tuned for more deep dives into criminology and the theories behind the headlines.